Kikasu Sarabji was a reclusive individual. He was a composer who banned his own music, and he wrote pieces without caring about their performance opportunities. So who really was this guy? I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about Sarabji. Kikasu Sarabji was born as Leon Dudley Sarabji to an English mother and a Parsi father. Not much is known about his early life, which stems from his extreme reclusiveness. Later in life, he said that all accounts of his birth were, quote, invariably false. What is known is that the guy had an insatiable appetite for new music, in a time when it was really hard to get modern music scores in Britain. Nonetheless, he managed to acquire a number of pieces from such modern composers as Debussy and Scriabin. He changed his name to Kaikostro when he became reacquainted with his father's Parsi culture. Sarabdi worked as a music critic for a time, but since he came from a rather wealthy background, he didn't actually need the money. His compositional career grew until 1936, when he unequivocally banned performances of his music, with the logic that no performance at all is vastly preferable to an obscene travesty. He instituted this ban after he heard one of his pieces being played very badly. While it was impossible for him to enforce the thing, the extreme complexity of the music and the near obscurity of its composer meant that the ban practically enforced itself. While this ban was in effect, Sarabji produced a ton of music. They're mostly written for the piano, and they're huge in scope and require pianists with lots of time, lots of stamina, and extreme skill in sight reading. His most famous piece, the Opus Clavicembalisticum, lasts the better part of five hours. He thought symphonically for the piano and produced a number of so-called piano symphonies. These were written to emulate the sounds of a full orchestra on just one instrument. Almost all of his piano music is written on three staffs, with the topmost staff one octave higher. I think a third staff gave him room to express the complexities of his music. In many cases, it can't actually be notated on two staffs, and in some cases he has to expand it up to five. In the late 1970s, South African pianist Yanti Solomon was part of a group of musicians who tracked down Sarabji and convinced him to end the ban on performances of his music. And Solomon then became one, the first of a long string of pianists to take up Sarabji's work. The difficulty of even Sarabji's smallest pieces mean that the inclusion of his pieces on concert repertoire is still quite lacking. Part of the trouble in locating information about Sarabji is lack of resources on places such as YouTube, which used to have a number of scores, recordings, and even rare interviews. These pretty much vanished overnight, and while some may have breached copyright laws, they vastly increased the public awareness of Sarabji's music. Sarabji's reclusiveness meant that he gave interviews few and far between, but he did give one to the pianist Michael Haberman. Sarabji told Haberman that if one of his large orchestral pieces was being performed, he, quote, wouldn't even cross the street to hear the performance and that many of his pieces simply ended up in the bottom of a cupboard somewhere. Given he said this after his informal ban was lifted, it's clear that he became much more apathetic to performances of his music instead of actively opposed to them. Though a private person, Sarabdi was by all accounts a highly intelligent and multilingual man. He revealed this side of himself to but a few friends over the years. These friends were basically other musicians who found his scores somewhere and came to track him down. For example, the current manager of the Sarabdi archive is a composer named Alastair Hinton, who discovered Sarabji's Opus Clavicembalisticum in a music library somewhere and was so fascinated by its reclusive composer that he ended up becoming one of Sarabji's closest confidants. Sarabji died at the age of 96. Interest in his music has only grown since his death. Although the process is slow because the pieces are so formidable, Sarabji's music continues to attract pianists looking for a challenge and for an obscure composer to champion. <laughs>